Hello and welcome to another episode of the Buckle Bomb Show here on BMP Sports. Coming to you bright and early on this Thursday morning. Uh, we did record a show on Tuesday and none of the audio worked. So me and Tony were able to get together again here this morning and just talk about everything once again. Why not? We have so much fun doing it. So I am joined as always by my broadcast partner, Anthony Rohn. Tony, happy birthday, buddy. Thank you, buddy, and happy birthday to you as well. I'm so excited to be here to talk about professional wrestling and uh, all elite wrestling now known as all emotional wrestling. Yeah, well, the one advantage we have is we got to watch Dynamite last night for this show that we get to talk about. And, of course, a lot of big stuff that happened there. Uh, Speaking of, we'll just uh, jump right into... Uh, I think the first thing we have to talk about right off the bat, since we haven't done a show in a couple of weeks, um, we the wrestling world lost uh, one hell of a wrestler uh, last Tuesday, the 18th. But uh, perhaps more importantly, it lost what seems to have been a, a very good man, a father, a husband, um, and just someone that everyone seems to love. Um Jay Briscoe died in an auto accident uh, Tuesday. Um, His two daughters were in the truck with him. Uh, They were in critical condition. The last I'd heard was that they are... um, And here's a picture of them there. The last I'd heard was uh, that The oldest one was the one that was the more severely injured one, but she had a feeling again in her extremities and she was able to move her toes and her feet around. And so we're getting good news on their end, thankfully. Um, But yeah, just a, just a heartbreaking and tragic story here. We've got, um, and it's it's tough to watch, but here's just because of how you mute it. But this this video came from Ring of Honor in 2020, in April of 2020, during the pandemic. And his daughter, you know, it was during the shutdown, you know, so he, she couldn't go to cheer practice. So he uh, helped her practice her routines. And it's just a heartbreaking heartwarming and now heartbreaking uh, video to see here. Uh, Tony, what are your thoughts on the passing of Jay Briscoe? Man, the best in the world 2014 is the first time I ever saw Briscoe Brothers match. Uh, and ever since I'm like, I followed their career very closely because believe it or not, I have relatives that are the Briscoe Brothers to a T. Um <laughs> The part, then, like it, it's getting me more now than it was when we first recorded this on Tuesday because yesterday was Jay Briscoe's birthday. Yesterday was also my daughter's birthday. Um, so like you just like oh, put yeah. in the context that everything that had happened with not only Jay but both of his daughters and. I'm sitting at dinner last night with my kid and I'm just looking at her like not even be able to begin to fathom what the few families going through and how difficult it is for me to even like try and be in that situation, like mentally prepare for what could potentially happen in the future. And I, I think that, uh, I commentary last night on Dynamite during the Mark Briscoe match and what the young buck said on being the elite, like it, it's all hundred percent true. Put pay differences aside, say, I love you to people more often. And just be grateful for the time that we have with everybody. I mean, I know, I feel like that's something that we have to, that we keep saying on here more and more because of the amount of, passings that happen in professional wrestling but you know 30 37 years old i believe he was 38 he was 38 38. he was just yeah just a few days away from 39 i mean yeah that's uh that's the important part 
and you know, you know, yeah, I just turned 37, so you know, I don't have any children, but you know, such a young age, and I, I never, I've never been an indie wrestling guy. You know, I'm starting to branch out more and more through this show and through Tony. Um, but even despite that, I've always heard of the Briscoes and I always, you know, the Briscoes, you know, I, yeah, sure. You know, Jack and Jerry, they're Jack's long gone. You know, what do, who are we talking about wrestling for ring of honor? Who are the, are they, are they related somehow? You know, the Briscoes are the original Briscoes were big here in Tampa, you know? So of course I know them well, but I, I've always heard about them and how good they were and always Ring of Honor stalwarts. But I never really got to really watch them until, you know, the the first match with FTR last year. And then that whole trilogy of matches uh, was so good. Um, and again, the one advantage we have here with everything that happened with not being able to post the show we recorded on Tuesday is we get to talk about last night. And the emotional match, Mark Briscoe on Dynamite uh, against Jay Lethal, who uh, obviously through Ring of Honor and other places was a longtime rival of the Briscoes and of Jay. Uh, It was a heck of a match, a great match, uh, which, I mean, the moment Jay comes out and they close up on his face and you can see the emotion on his face, I'm... Immediately in tears. What did you think of uh, that match and of the moment uh, oh. here at the end? Even long before that, when they played the uh, video package for Jay Briscoe. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it, it was for Jay Briscoe and his kids. They really highlighted how good of a person he was and how much a family man Jay was. And then, uh, yeah, the second Jay Lethal walked down on the stage, I'm sitting on the couch watching it. And he starts tearing up, and I game over, dude. I mean, shit. I'm getting teary eyed watching, you know, talking about this. But last night, the match itself was beautiful, very fitting tribute to a man that gave so much to professional wrestling. Uh, just like Ian Riccoboni said on commentary last night, a guy who gave so much to professional wrestling that. Maybe a lot of people don't even know how much he truly gave to professional wrestling. Uh, some of the things that we see in the NXT developmental right now uh, that wouldn't be there if not for the Briscoe brothers. Um, and then seeing Mark uh, throughout the match and breaking. Uh, he was really good at pulling it back together but yeah uh and then just the moment at the end you know everybody comes out to the ramp and seeing roosh wearing those sunglasses but you could still see by his lips and tears that he was losing it seeing dan brian danielson in the back and his sling just losing it like everybody the names on that stage and how emotional they were all of it just tells you I mean, just to share a quick story last night, everybody knows pro wrestling tees. They, uh, they host the shop, AEW and the shop honor. They're selling the, the Jay Briscoe tee. I heard some of the proceeds go to the Pew family. What most people don't know is, is most of the proceeds from all the the other Briscoe brothers merch that's on pro wrestling tees.com also goes to the Pew family. Uh, when they announced the J shirt, I bought the J shirt. Last night, I went back to go buy another Briscoe Brothers shirt. I was in line at checkout. Keep in mind, at checkout on a on a website for one hour after Dynamite went off the air, and I can guarantee you that was all because of the J shirt that they were showing at the end of that match. Just just think, when is the last time they announced the new T shirt? And you go in to buy it that night, and you can't get through with your purchase on a website. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll have because uh, the proceeds of that shirt one hundred percent go to go to the Briscoe or go to the Pew family. Um, I'll have the link to that shirt or at least the shophonor dot com. Uh, if I can't direct, if I can't link the shirt directly, and I'll also have a link to the uh, GoFundMe for the family. Uh, in the YouTube description down below, you can just click on it. It'll be in this description for uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast app. It'll be there, too. You can just copy and paste it uh, if possible. But uh, I'll have that link in the description 100% for sure. Uh, all right. We'll go ahead and move on from the passing of Jay. And uh, we'll talk about some what is old news now but it's been so while since we've recorded a show uh stephanie mcmahon has stepped down as the co-ceo and executive chair chairperson uh nick Ho- nick Hahn is now the sole ceo of wwe and vince vincent kennedy mcmahon is uh once again chairman of the board after a unanimous vote for him uh what do you think of this news? Does it mean there's some family squabbling? Do you think there's some uh, office intrigue going on here? Or is it was this kind of always the plan? Hey, now, now that Vince is back, Stephanie can step away as she was uh, last year for a bit. I don't think that this was the plan whatsoever. I, based off of what Talent was saying, based off what people backstage are saying, I was always under the impression that it was going to be the triad of Steph, Paul, and Nick. Um, Who's ever writing the season of The Matrix clearly hired the writers of Succession. Because (laughs) it's just, it's so crazy to see what's unfolding with this. And then you get other things into the fray that, you know, not only are Warner Brothers Discovery looking at buying WWE. Uh, the Khan family themselves are looking into buying WWE. Um, and that's a crazy dynamic when you think about that, uh, considering our last topic and the uh, opinions Tony Khan has about the people who hold his television contract right now. Um, I, I feel bad for Steph. Um, I feel bad for Linda. It seems like she keeps, you know, nobody keeps bringing her up whatsoever when it comes to this whole story. Um, I don't think Linda wants anything to do with any of it. I think she's, I don't think she does either. But still, though, I mean, your husband is literally paying millions upon millions of dollars, so he could do what he's doing behind your back. That's got to be rough. I don't. Um, I don't think it's even behind her back anymore. I think. Yeah. I think. They're only married in name. I think it's more about politics than anything else. Yeah. Man, if only there's like a certain couple where the wife keeps running for president and the husband was already president. That's kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, there's one name that I have to say, I hope I don't end up saying I feel bad for, and that's Paul himself. As long as Vince keeps his word, like never ever happens. And just keeps letting Paul run creative. I think the WWE product itself is going to be okay. I just don't think uh, <laughs> Vince shouldn't go anywhere near television. Now, I, I do want to point out that I don't see anyone talking about or really bringing up. there. There's this, because there was, just a, before Vince forced his way back, there was a vote from the board to keep Vince out. They weren't able to because he had the the voting power with his special shares. But uh, it was a unanimous vote. Everyone keeps talking about that with Stephanie, Triple H, and Nick Khan on the board. But it to me, it's almost it's likely, if not almost certain, that Stephanie and Triple H, Paul Levesque, uh, abstained from that vote, which would still allow for unanimous vote one way or the other. 
potentially the same thing for this vote to bring Vince back. Um, once St- Stephanie obviously had nothing to do with the vote to bring him back this time, to make him chairman at least, um, because that would have been after she'd already retired. But uh, certainly Triple H probably abstained from that because of the family relations. and the... So, you know, try not to look too deeply into some of that. It doesn't mean there's not intrigue and there hasn't been a bit of a struggle. Um, but... I think the biggest loss in this is to the uh, to the re- locker room and to the morale backstage. I think a lot of people really love Stephanie McMahon, and they were shocked and saddened to see her go. I don't think they're happy about it. Um, a lot of people have always had a lot of really nice things to say about Stephanie, uh, uh, unlike her dad, quite frankly. All right, we'll go ahead and move on here to the next topic. Monday night, we had the Raw is 30 show, the throwback show with a bunch of legends. Uh, I watched it live. Tony, I know you watched it uh, while you were, uh, you know, doormanning at the bar, so you didn't get to necessarily see or get to listen to a lot of it, but you were watching it up on the screen. I actually, it's one of the first shows I've watched front to back live uh, Raws in a long time. It still was a slog, but it was a decent show. Uh, you know, it's the, the DX thing. It's starting to get a little old already. You know, maybe it's because they were just back a few weeks ago. But, you know, I, the opening segment was fantastic. With the uh, uh, Sami Zayn and the Bloodline and uh, Jay running over to stop solo from giving him the Samoan spike and all of that was fantastic a a great tag match with the great ending uh with Sami Zayn stepping in to help uh help the users keep the titles uh and the return of Brock Lesnar at the end to uh well apparently help uh Austin Theory keep his U.S. title belt as he attacked Bobby Lashley apparently setting up a Wrestlemania feud what do you think of Raw is 30? I thought it was great front to back. Uh, well, except for, you know, that cage match segment because Roman Reigns gets to do whatever he wants. So the bloodline segment goes long. Um, you know, you know exactly where I'm going with this. And again, uh, there's a silver lining in everything. And now that more information's come out, I feel more comfortable talking about this. Obviously, my favorite segment was The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. Uh, Undertaker was my favorite wrestler as a child. Bray Wyatt's my favorite wrestler now. And the moment they shared together, there was a lot of speculation about what was said. The Undertaker commented saying that it was one of those moments that's a special moment. And then Bray Wyatt basically... Send a long tweet out after that, thanking Taker for all he's done for the industry and um, basically confirming that what that moment was between them was a passing of the torch. Uh, For me, the rest of the show could have been a steaming dumpster fire, but it would have been great due to that one moment. Uh, So Raw 30 was a win in my book. Yeah, I agree. It was a win. Uh, Again, with the steel cage, I I think it's very interesting. You brought it up that there was a timing issue. And a lot of fans, and yourself included on the original taping of this show, were like, well, why wouldn't you get rid of some of the junk that was later in the show? The whole uh, uh, Bianca Belair, Sonya Deville stuff was kind of maybe the lamest part of the show, you know. But it's been brought up, and I didn't realize this even at the recording. For whatever reason, I watched three hours of the show, and I didn't realize the entire first hour was commercial-free. So that made it a, that much more complicated to try and rein something in at the back half of the show as opposed to the first hour. And uh, I think it was more of a logistical thing. This was an easy thing. They already, apparently they were going to have Bailey lose the match and then they would come in and get their heat back by doing the beatdown. You just do the beatdown. It sucks that you're losing the, that the match that you've been promoting isn't going to happen, but 
it, it's almost beneficial in that Bailey doesn't have to take a loss. So, you know, it sucked, but, you know, they dealt with it, I think, the best way they could, more than likely. Um, anytime you have any sort of mistiming like that, it's a scramble and you're doing whatever you can. It's because you're live. And it's it's panic mode at that point, I could imagine. Um, while we're talking about Raw, we, we touched on the end of Dynamite uh, a couple of topics ago. But since we got to, a chance to watch it, what, uh, what did you think of last night's Dynamite uh, aside from the uh, emotional last segment or last match? Um, Action Andrade impressed me yet again. I mean, that, that kid's going to be something one of these days in the industry. Um, of course, the announcement of Timothy Thatcher coming in to wrestle Brian Danielson next week. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, the Buddy Matthews versus Darby yeah. Allen match. Awesome. I, I'm going to go out and let me say that, you know, the Mark Briscoe match, if it wasn't a thing at all, Still, this would have been the best episode of Dynamite that I've seen in quite some time. Um, after the Darby Allen match, the Samoa Joe promo, beautiful. Um, <laughs> of course, MJF hiding in the back yeah. room. That little promo he cut with uh, wouldn't be the first time a Jew had to hide from someone with blue eyes line, popped the hell out of me. Um, yeah, just. My my favorite match of the night, aside from obviously Briscoe and Lethal, was uh, actually Tony Storm and Ruby Soho. I thought that was a fantastic match, um, a, a really really good match. Um, a little bit of a of a I wouldn't say a cheat ending. It was it was still a clean ending, but it was the whole hey someone's music is playing, distraction win. Uh, but that's okay. It's it's a TV thing, and it's setting up further stuff. The match itself was fantastic, and I, I thought was really good there. And yeah, I agree with you on a lot of that stuff. Uh, Action Andrade, that tag team match uh, to kick off the show was 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 really solid. Um, some good stuff uh, from Dynamite last night. And what strike what's striking me, and we haven't had the chance to really talk about. Uh, we discussed that they were going to do it, but we haven't talked about it since the the updated look of the show. It's not just, you know, I, I don't know how closely you're watching. It's not just the graphics and colors and the stage. It's literally how the show's being produced has been completely updated and I think has made the show look a thousand times better just in pure quality. And there's still some gaffes here and there. Uh, they came back from a, a, a break and Excalibur started talking, but they didn't have the graphic ready. And then he had to kind of redo what he was saying. But that's going to happen on live TV no matter what. Um, it, the show has really, really improved just the look of it. Just if you were to channel scroll and come across that, I think you're more likely to just stop because it pops more now. Uh, and just the, the, the dynamic, the more dynamic camera angles and the jib that they were using, all fantastic stuff that's really been upgraded. So I don't know how much you're really even noticing it. Well, yeah, um, I actually know why it all changed now, too. Um, and forgive me, because I did not know we were going to talk about this, or else I would have had the name ready. Um, the person who's actually producing Raw right now, or producing Dynamite right now, was one of the WWE's head producers for a couple years. We talked about and then this. he uh, bowed out. Oh, yeah, we did, yes. We talked right. about this a couple of months ago, and that a lot of WWE people were thought, oh, this is great for AEW because this will really up their game. This guy, and I, yeah, I can't think of his name at the moment either, uh, but he was he wanted Kevin Dunn's job, and Kevin Dunn wasn't ever going to go anywhere. So, uh, all right, we'll go ahead and move on here, and we'll talk about Impact Wrestling of all places. Uh, Santino Morella and somebody call my mama. Ernest the Cat Miller have debuted as authority figures on Impact. Uh, I think it was uh, Santino Morello was the one that debuted first last week. Uh, and uh, he is the 
deputy of authority, I believe is what they're DOA. And he's got a badge that he keeps showing. I'm, I'm the deputy of authority. Um, but then in kind of a fun segment this week on impact, there is a schmoz going with bully Ray and, uh, Oh, forgive me. I don't, I don't watch a whole lot of impacts. So I don't know the names. I Jordan know. Grace. Jordan Grace on Mickey one James. side and Mickey James. And, uh, shoot. I liked her too. Um, but I forget, I forget again, some of the names, the one, the, the woman who was shooting the promo on, uh, on, uh, Mickey James. But, was it Misha Slamovich? No. But um, out came, you know, it started to, to devolve, and then out came, out comes Santina Marilla, and he's like, "Man, everyone, stop! You know, bully Ray, bully Ray, get back here, because Bully Ray's trying to leave." But he's like, "I, I want to start a match." But in a little bit of a, it was very reminiscent of the Triple H of the DX segment on Raw is 30 where Triple H is like hey man this this booking stuff is hard and then they brought out someone they brought out uh Teddy Long uh here he, Santino Morella in his you know kind of doofus ways like I, I I can't figure out how to make the dynamics of a six-man tag team match work and out comes Ernest the Cat Miller who has experience as the WCW Nitro commissioner and he was able to make the six six man tag team match, and they got that going. They talked Bully Ray into staying. Bully Ray was like, "I don't, I don't listen to WCW rejects," but he ended up having to do the match. Uh, what do you think of Santino Morella and Ernest the Cat Miller on Impact TV here? Well, if we know anything from WWE. Um, if your father is still involved with the company, you will be slapped with his gimmick quick as hell. Um, that's why I'm happy Santino is in Impact. Um, a, his character just works for what Impact is. Um, same way with Ernest the Cat Miller. It works for what Impact is. Um, Santino Morello's daughter is uh, currently signed with NXT on a developmental deal. And she's really good. And, uh, you know, fortunately, because he's an impact, I don't think she's going to get the uh, Cobra gimmick, fortunately. So, yeah, I'm curious to see where this plays out because impact, when they were TNA, they tried a little too hard with the authority figures of the past, i.e. a Dixie Carter, a Vince Russo, and Eric Bischoff, a Hulk Hogan. Um so let's see where this goes. I I really love what Impact's doing right now. Unfortunately, I feel like there's something deeper behind this. I feel like Jordan Grace is actually getting ready to retire Mickey James. So yeah, we're just see where this see how this plays out and what it means going forward. Cause I, I feel like once that angle's over, there may not be room for the uh, DOA anymore. Yeah. Um I, and we brought up Jordan Grace there, and I, I mentioned it on the original version of the show, and I want to mention it again. She, she's she got a look. I I follow her on social media, and she looks great, but have actually seeing her on TV, man, and in that ring, she looks fantastic. And I, I saw a little bit of that match. Um, I, I want to see more of her because I think I – think, and, and you said – that you don't think she wants to leave her uh, her man, but I think she could go on to bigger and better things very shortly. Just just off her look, I think WWE or AEW would love to have Jordan Grace. Well, I don't know if you noticed this or not since you follow her on social media. Uh, the other day she posted a side-by-side yep. image from her two years ago versus now. And my God, that is what dedication and hard work looks like. It's insane. And she looked great, I think, two years ago. But but now it's just she looks so good and and exactly what you want from a wrestler. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and move on to the next topic here. Adam Cole has come back. 
uh, from his injury. He appeared on Dynamite a couple of weeks ago, and then on the uh, Jay, Jay Briscoe tribute Ring of Honor show that they recorded after uh, Dynamite last week. Uh, he gave a really good promo, uh, talked about just how serious his injury was, which we didn't really know ahead of time. Uh, but now he's back on TV and he'll be back in the ring and it, and I'm excited. I'm actually excited to see Adam Cole back. I think he's been missing from dynamite. What do you think of Adam Cole coming back to dynamite? First off, put some respect on his motherfucking name. It's Adam Cole, baby. Um, no, just like you said, I, I had no clue how severe his concussion was, um, you know, and it's scary when you think about all things considered. They're doing this uh, storyline right now with Hangman and John Moxley uh, that's involving concussions. Um, and then you also taking into consideration what airs directly after Dynamite and a lot of the wrestlers, even though AEW is supposed to have a you know, partnership with Power Slap. A lot of the wrestlers are speaking out against it right now because of how barbaric it is with the concussions it's causing and brain damage and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, I, just a story he told about how he couldn't sleep and he'd be waking up in the middle of the night because mentally he just wouldn't know what would be going on or he'd be in pain. And it's just, you know, you played football just like I did, I'm sure. You got the head rattled around a few times. I mean, I remember a few bus trips from away games back where I'd be sitting in one seat and the coach would be sitting across from me and he'd have his hands on my shoulders and every couple minutes he'd have to rattle me or shine a flashlight in my eyes and make sure I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not falling asleep. I'm good, coach. Like, that shit is horrifying. Now, factor in things like age and uh, past concussions, CTE, hardening of the brain, uh, it's... I'm very happy Avicol's back. I'm very happy he made you know, let let's face it, and we need to quit doing this as a society, saying that he made a full recovery, because when you have a brain injury like that, there's never such thing as a full recovery. You just get one more concussion that you can have knocked off your list. I mean, I think that's fair to say. Um so yeah, very missed on dynamite. Very interesting character development they're doing with Adam Cole because he's not the cocky Adam Cole that we're all used to. He's yeah. um, more humble, more hungry, improved work ethic. These are all things that they're trying to drive home, that he wants to wrestle anybody and everybody in AEW. It's not story time with Adam Cole, baby, anymore. It's no, I'm dialed in, I'm focused. Let's do the work. All right, Adam Cole, baby, he is back in AEW. All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll have our Royal Rumble preview here. We still got one more show before we got tomorrow SmackDown uh, as the go-home show. Uh, but I think the, the Rumble itself is pretty locked in. We've got just a couple of matches and then the two Rumbles themselves. So we'll go ahead and start right off here and talk about uh your favorite wrestler as you said bray wyatt and la knight in a mountain dew pitch black match uh it's hard to talk about this match when i don't even know exactly what the hell it is but uh what do you think is going to happen in this match uh you threw out an idea on the original recording here so uh what what do you think this match is all right so what i think this kind of match is, um, let's see here. I'm trying to recall the name of it, but uh, I, I, of course, I'm not going to remember it. Uh, TNA has this match type where they lock both competitors in dark rooms for 24 hours, kayfabe. And then after that 24 hours, they come out, and the arena, of course, is lit how the arena is lit, making it very difficult for the competitors to see each other. It almost looks like it's implied in the graphic for the match that that's what they're going to do with that. Um, either that, or it's going to end up being a uh, some kind of match where maybe it's going to be a cinematic match in the dark, uh, which is also kind of my... Worst fear, you know what I mean? Like, it's uh, 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of cinematic matches, and that's my fear of this, especially for like Bray's, you know, big pay per view or or premium live event return match here. Uh, yeah. uh, to do something cinematic, I've uh, I've never been a big fan of them. Um, but yeah, I certainly a Bray goes over whatever this ends up being. Bray goes over, right? Yeah, the the Bray has to go over. I mean, oh, not necessarily, because I think a, a loss to LA Knight's just going to push uh, either the Uncle Howdy or the Fiend that's still in Bray Wyatt's head to come closer and closer to the surface. Because again, we are getting Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight. It's not Uncle Howie. It's not the Fiend. Um, so I think a loss for Bray Wyatt could uh, be what pushes him over the edge. Excuse me. What pushes him over the edge to bring the character back. Right. All right. Hold on. E. Um, yeah, and we'll go ahead and move on and talk about our, uh, we'll skip that for now. We'll talk about the match for the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair versus, speaking of Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy, Alexa Bliss. Um, this is an interesting one that I think could go either way, but I think the way they're building up Alexa Bliss here with the Wyatt connection um, I think she ends up going over here uh, and winning the title from Bianca. What are your thoughts on this match? You know, the first recording we did of this episode, I said Alexa Bliss is going to go over. I now completely changed my thoughts on that. It's the same mistake they made with The Fiend the first time. And I don't think they're going to make it again, especially now with Alexa Bliss. With the story that they have going right now with Alexa Bliss, you don't need to put a belt on her. The belt isn't going to benefit the story that they're telling with Alexa Bliss in any way. I think uh, I think there's going to be some chicanery. Yeah, bringing that word back. There's going to be some chicanery with the uh, Wyatt 6 logo appearing and maybe the uh, black ooze pouring off Alexa Bliss again. And uh, just for a reason, she might walk out of the match. Mm. But I, I, don't, I no longer see Alexa Bliss going over. I, I still lean towards Alexa Bliss, but I can see just about anything in this match. Uh, I think this is... This might be more unpredictable than some of the rumbles right now, uh, this match. But, uh, yeah, uh, I can definitely see Bianca coming out still with the title, but whatever happens, it won't be a clean victory for her. It'll be something happening, something that leads to an Alexa loss, either from Uncle Howdy or maybe she tries to tries to fight you know, the pull of the Wyatt Six and of Uncle Howdy and all that, and and in her sh- internal struggle, Bianca takes advantage. Something along those lines could happen. We'll see. Um, all right. We'll move on to the main event. Uh, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship match. Uh, Roman Reigns defending against Kevin Owens. Uh... I don't think there's any shot Kevin Owens goes over here or or any shot. Yeah, I don't think there's any shot Kevin Owens goes over. But how Roman Reigns wins, I think, is where things get interesting. Uh, Could it be a Sami Zayn thing where he screws up or alternatively turns on the bloodline? Um, I was talking about we disagree on this a little bit. You think they're going... They're going to run the Sami Zayn thing all the way to SummerSlam. I think it's going to end up being Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Usos at WrestleMania for the tag titles. But uh, how how do you see this match playing out, specifically for the bloodline? Because we're both in agreement that Roman Reigns is winning. So what I think is going to happen is, um, <clears throat> you know, Raw is 30. Uh, 
it was such a slow burn of getting Jay to finally trust Sammy. And you, much like myself, probably when you saw Jay save Sammy from the Samoan spike so they can present the defense. Um, I think now that you've seen Sammy help out, the Usos retain. Now it's time for Sammy to step up and help Roman retain. Um, I don't think, though, it's going to be a very, uh, a very uh, like willing help to retain. I think Sammy's going to um, have some mental coil about what he just did. Um, that's why I think it's going to be a slow burn going into SummerSlam season and not so much WrestleMania season. Um, then again, you get the Ring of Honor duo of El Generico and Kevin Owens siding with the one-time Ring of Honor champion Cody Rhodes going into WrestleMania and you'd have the Indy Darlings versus the Bloodline. Oh my God, what the hell? Oh, you're working yourself into a shoot here, it almost sounds like. Like, don't don't start booking things and in your head thinking, oh my God, the Indies versus the Bloodline. That's that's not ever going to really be a thing that WWE <laughs> thinks. Uh, doesn't mean Listen. that you can't have that happen. Because again, I think, and we'll talk about the Rebels, and there's some news floating around out there about a certain Stone Cold, but I you could very well get Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns and then the Usos and KO and Sami Zayn. I just don't think they'll necessarily promote it in any sort of way. There might be hints, but of like, oh, the, the indie guys versus, you know, wrestling royalty. Listen, El Generico exists in the WWE lexicon thanks to Michael Cole. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that in a million years, but man, what a wild ride the last year was. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to... Uh, the Royal Rumble matches themselves. Uh, we'll start talking. We'll start up with the uh, women's Royal Rumbles match, and we don't need the graphic for these. The women's Royal Rumble match. Um, very few women have been officially confirmed this match. Uh, when we talked about Raw Thirty earlier, there are a lot of legends. There is only one female legend that was Medusa or Alundra Blaze. Um, we can all assume they're holding back the female and diva legends for the Royal Rumble itself. Um, so you'll have your Tori Wilsons. Maybe we'll get a Stacey Keebler sighting. Maybe, a, you know, we'll get a Trish Stratus and Alita and and all those greats, of course. Kelly Kelly. Uh, but we're, we also talked about on our show, on, on the recording that will never be seen on Tuesday. Uh, the question I... Don't you do this to me, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> we also talked about how there would be an, an NXT, certainly a lot of NXT women. You'll have Roxanne Perez, Gigi Dolan, I'm sure, and JC Jane. Uh, you'll have uh, maybe a Wendy Chu. And... Uh, uh, Cora Jade and... Probably Nikita Lyons. And we all wanted, we all assume, because my question, and I, it's still the question I want to pose to you was not just who's going to win, but who's going to be in the final four. And we both th believe there's going to be an X NXT person, and we kind of threw Nikita in there by default, but now we find out Nikita's blown her knee out. She's torn her a ACL and a meniscus. And uh, there's no way she'll be there for the Rumble. Uh, it'll probably be a good 9 to 12 months before we see Nikita in a ring again. So It's 7 to 9 months is what they're saying right now. Yeah, yeah. So now that we know that information, we know Nikita is not going to be in the Final Four. What are your Final Four mm -hmm. and who do you have winning this match? First and foremost, uh, I wish my baby, my future baby mama, my future ex-wife, Nikita Lyons, a quick and speedy recovery. Um, you're going to be missed. 
Um, I'm going to buy your proceed shirt as well. Um, ironically enough, I'm sitting on the couch last night watching the Mark Briscoe match. And David Truitt, of all people, texts me and goes, hey, bud, I got some bad news for you. And he sends me the entire report on Nikita Lyons. And I'm like, you and I had already talked about this. But just knowing that it's a long running joke now of everybody knowing how much I love Nikita Lyons. (laughs) And people are just trying to piss in my cornflakes, essentially, at this point, by sending me the medical report over and over and over again. (laughs) Oh, Uh, boy. So, screw it. I'm completely changing my picks for Royal Rumble. Don't even give us... Don't even, don't even care anymore. Um, you know, it could be fucking Wendy Chew during nap time, and that's how she gets the pin because she's sleeping and accidentally rolls over on somebody who's knocked out. I don't know. Yeah, I just spoke that into existence, and if Vince ever comes back to creative, you know what's happening. Um, I just... I'm going to agree with you, Bobby. Rhea Ripley. It's how they're going to you know put the Judgment Day on SmackDown. It's how they're going to retire Rey Mysterio. There you go. Yeah, Ray, Ray Ripley. The final four. It, it's going to lead into Ray Ripley versus Charlotte. Though if Bianca does end up winning uh, the earlier match against Alexa, you could certainly go that way as well. Ray Ripley and Bianca Belair. Uh, but I think I think the bigger match would be Rhea and Charlotte. Um, because Rhea still has the backing of the Judgment Day, and I think Charlotte goes over. I think if it's I think if it's it ends up being Rhea and Bianca at Mania, I think Rhea goes over and wins the belt. But I do think Rhea Ripley is winning this uh, Royal Rumble. What what do you think are your f- final four? What are your final four? Well, unfortunately, I got a little inside information. I know that's what's happening at this point. Unfortunately, wish I didn't, but here we are. <laughs> um, Final four, obviously Rhea, probably Roxanne Perez. You know, they got to highlight the NXT Women's Champion. Um, Ronda and Becky. Yeah, Ronda, Becky, obviously, or no. Uh I think I was wishy-washy on putting Becky in the final four before, wasn't I? I it's yeah. Ronda, Charlotte, Rhea. Yeah, I think. It's Why like, would Charlotte be in it? No, no, yeah, she's not. She's going to be in the match because she's champion. Yeah, she won't be in it. So Ronda. Uh, yeah, either or, Becky or Bailey, or if you're wishy-washy on Becky. There's always the possibility that there will be a returning Nia Jax. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Here's we're completely forgetting. I can't believe you forgot. Chelsea Green. That's right. I did put Chelsea Green in my Chelsea original four, is, but it, after, after Nikita gets hurt, how can you really remember what's going on with this match? Um, so, uh, yeah, for me it was I, – because I, I felt like – Bailey and Becky are going to have a thing, and that's going to end up getting Becky eliminated uh, by chicanery with damage control. That's right, buddy. Bring it back. Bring it back. So it'll be Chelsea Green, a debuting Chelsea Green. They're going to push her um, into the Final Four. Rhea Ripley, who's going to win the thing. Charlotte. Oh, no, again, not Charlotte. Ronda Rousey. And... Who, who will probably be the final two, and that's the one Ray ends up going over, perhaps. And then the you'll have an NXT person in there. I don't think it'll be the NXT champion um, because she's already champion. She's already got the belt. I think they'll push maybe a Cora Jade or someone along those lines. So I'll say I'll say and that's why I said that's why I went with the Kita before. So I'll say Cora oh. Jade here. Maybe a Mandy Rose. I could. Wish I'd be forever pissed if they fired Mandy Rose only to bring her back a few weeks later. I mean, I'll be happy well, for Mandy. You... I'll be happy for Mandy, but I'll be pissed that I didn't get to meet her. That have... I am pissed that I didn't get to meet her the week after she got checked... fired. 
Have you checked your fan time account lately? <laughs> uh, it is getting more risque, so I don't think she's coming back. Oh, okay. Yeah, not, not coming back. Nope. Confirmed. No, she's, she's full on got, got nipples out now. So, uh, so go subscribe to Mandy Rose's fan time account and check that out. Cause it is getting even spicier than it was before. So, um, isn't her fiance like a pastor or some like some religious thing? <laughs> He's in a lot of these. She's grabbing oh my fun God. spots in a lot of these. So if he is, uh. fun spots, interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So that'll be the women's. You got me thinking about Mandy Rose, and I paused for a second. I apologize. We'll move on to the men's Royal Rumble match. And this is a little harder to predict. I mean, everyone and their mom is saying Cody Rhodes because they're pushing it. It's the obvious move. May not be the wrong move. But at the same time, we've got, obviously, for a while, we thought we might be getting a Rock versus Roman Reigns, you know, head of the bloodline kind of match. But news came out last week that... Rock apparently decided uh, he just didn't have enough time to get into shape for a match. Which, didn't he know? Like, this is what WWE has wanted for like two years now. But, whatever. He, you know, he, they, they couldn't work it out. Whatever reason. But then Sean Ross Sapp has put a report out there through Fightful Select that WWE has made an offer, a big money offer to Stone Cold Steve Austin for a match against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. No word on how long ago exactly that offer was made. No word on whether it was accepted. But we know that offer happened. If that is true and if Stone Cold accepts that offer we gotta figure out how to get to that match Stone Cold versus Roman Reigns where the Royal Rumble faces Roman Reigns at Wrestlemania so I think you could get a surprise Stone Cold number 30 entrance so that way he doesn't have to be in there that long because I don't think he wants to wrestle that much in the Rumble and if that's the case, he wins. If Stone Cold is not in the Rumble, I think it's definitely Cody Rhodes. Um, but that makes... So, assuming Stone Cold is not in it, because it's kind of impossible to predict that, my final four would be Cody, Drew McIntyre, ooh, hmm, Cody Drew. I was trying to... There was someone else I remember putting in it on Tuesday, and now my mind's blanking here. I think I had Brock Lesnar in the Final Four. And... Hmm. Why don't we say... You know what? I'm going to put Gunther. I think, in the final four. Because I think they want to push him, and I think they could have him up there. What are, what are your final four for the Men's Royal Rumble, and who do you think is going to win? All right. Hold on just a second. For whatever reason, I've got no audio for you right now. That's because I muted myself because yeah. I had to blow my nose. All right. <laughs> All right, here's my completely serious final four. Cody Rhodes. Okay. Drew McIntyre. I'm staying with the Drew McIntyre pick. He's not winning, but he will be in the final four. Matt Cardona, Jay White. (laughs) Oh, will it never end with you? Obviously, I'm just kidding. Although, Jay White's officially a free agent, so... Do with that information what you that want. That is true. Um, no, we all know Cody Rhodes is winning this. Um, 
I expect Matt Cardona to maybe make an appearance. Maybe. You're shaking your head, but, you know. And let's be honest, I feel like the uh, whole Good Brothers New Japan storyline that was still going on after they came to WWE, the whole Carl Anderson, I felt more like a recruiting trip than it did a belt defense. Um, so there's a possibility Jay White shows up, but he's not going to be in the final four. He's going to get eliminated by Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens is going to lose to Roman. And he's just going to reenter himself back into the Rumble because this happens in like every freaking match that's ever happened at Royal Rumble that involves a title. And then KO is just going to give him the AJ Styles treatment and eliminate him and say, Welcome to the WWE before he gets eliminated by somebody bigger. Um, so, Final Four, Cody Rhodes. Drew McIntyre, uh, Brock. Now I have to go Brock. And so, so far we agree. No, no, no. I'm going to go back on Brock. I'm going to stay true to what I was saying because the storyline and the angle that's set up with Bobby and Brock, there's going to be some kind of chicanery in the Roller Rumble match itself that's going to lead to Brock being eliminated early. And I think what that chicanery is going to be is they're bringing back the Hurt Business. They've been teasing the hell out of it. Yeah. So th- that's where that's going to end up going, I have a feeling. You think you think I just, Omos and Bobby Lashley could team together? To take uh, take out Brock Lesnar in the Rumble. Yeah, yeah, I really do. Doesn't sound I mean, like a bad I, they idea. like to build. They like to build Brock as a strong guy, but you're not stronger than that, homeboy. I can definitely buy that. That's that's that would be interesting. God, why am I struggling with my final two? Because I feel like when we first did this, it was just boom, boom. So do you want to put Bobby um, Bobby Lashley up there? You think he goes into the final four nope. then, or? Nope, because I think uh, Omasa immediately turns on Lashley. Um, so I'm going to go Cody, Drew, Sami Zayn. Ooh, that's who it was I think I had in the final four. You're right. Yeah, that's that's who I believe I had as well, just because the possibility is there. They really try and push Sammy to win the Royal Rumble. They want him to win so he can forfeit his match. That way, the, the Tribal Chief doesn't have to wrestle at WrestleMania. Um, and th- my fourth and final pick, and I know this is one of those picks It seems like it's way out of left field, but he's been getting a little push lately on SmackDown. Ricochet. Hmm. Hmm. Not saying he's going to, you know, go past the final four or get to the final two or anything like that, but they are going to have to switch it up eventually with the mainstays that you would think would see in there. And Ricochet makes perfect sense. I mean, he is the World Cup wrestling champion or whatever the hell they're calling it. Interesting. I I like the idea with with my final four, you could have maybe a Brock Lesnar and Gunther face off. That'd be fun. But uh, dream match, right? Uh, but there are a lot of interesting possibilities, and uh, neither one of us are probably right with the final four for either Rumble. But it'll be uh, it'll be fun to 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 see how close we get. All right, that'll do it for our Royal Rumble preview. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to quick jabs. Anything uh, you got? Yeah, actually, uh, the great mood is final bye-bye happened. Um, and the thing that surprised me the most about it is this wasn't a typical retirement match because traditionally in professional wrestling in your last match, uh, you're the one that takes the pinfall. It's called furthering the business, paying your final respect. Um, but in this match, the great mood had teamed up with Sting and Darby Allen, And here this, they were accompanied to the ring by the great Kabuki. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Um, but they got the victory against 
Hakushi, Akira, and Namamachi. Uh, they're claiming this is the Great Muda's final appearance, but I just have some kind of inconspicuous feeling that we'll end up getting another match between Sting and Muda by the end of the year. Yeah. I don't know. I think they did this whole big thing, a final tour. I think I think Muda's done. Uh, the the truly great Muda is. I think that was that was it for him. Uh, I'll have to go check that out for sure. Um, shoot, uh, I'm trying to think about what else. Oh, uh, the Elite won the best of seven to become uh, trios titles since the last time we have talked on air what do you think of the elite becoming trios champions once again just a balls across your chin best of seven series that did not need to be a best of seven um admittedly AEW's version of tables liars and chairs was pretty awesome um a lot of good chicanery in that match this is just a chicanery episode um so yeah th- the final match in the best of seven was awesome um, we get you guys are on TBS and TNT, but we don't need a reminder every seven months that so is the NBA. Just throwing it out there. Uh, I guarantee actually most of the people that watch Dynamite couldn't tell you who currently plays for the LA Lakers. So I, you know, just throwing it out there, just looking off of profile pictures of all the fanboys and girls and it's that constantly defend AEW on a weekly basis. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, just f- get back to wrestling. Maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> Not everything has to be a tie in with fucking King Kong or Godzilla or Jurassic Park or Star Wars or NBA. We get it. Warner Brothers Discovery. Ooh, co-branding. That's why Sorry. that's why WB has it. That's what you do. Um, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> what if what if uh, this leads to a CMFTR match down the road? Don't do, don't do that to me. <laughs> we're not, we're not going there. Nope. <laughs> I mean, you get the fantasy nope. book. I want to do a little fantasy booking. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I, I hope. Whatever, whatever astral dildo is shoved up CM Punk's butt right now, I hope they can pull it out. Uh, same thing with the elite, and just break bread at a table. They don't have to like each other, but they have to realize that at some point there is money there to be made, all things considered. And bring Ace Steel and Larry in to be enforcers. Okay, you hook Larry <laughs> up with some of those metal chompers. I mean, you know, it's uh. it's a great idea, but I. I Ego is the biggest thing that kills in professional wrestling. All right? Think about the Ultimate Warrior. Think about Hulk Hogan. Think about Macho Man. Can four guys who clearly aren't on the same amount of steroids as those guys were back in the 80s and 90s put their differences aside? Six guys. Or four guys, three and one. I, I see what you're saying, but yeah. yeah. FTR and the Young Bucks don't have a whole lot of love that. loss for each other either, so. <laughs> uh, you know, just remember, FTR wouldn't have their name if it wasn't for the future WWE gold winged eagle champion Cody Rhodes. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. Uh, all right. Anything, anything else for quick jabs? Um, yeah, no, we covered it in Royal Rumble and Nikita Lions. God damn it. All right. Well, yeah, I think that's about it. I'm going to go, you know, play Suicide Silence while I take a dark shower. All right. That'll do it for this episode of the Buckle Bomb Show. Tony, you're getting back into TikTok. Tell me a little bit about that. So... Anybody who doesn't know, I like to make stupid, funny videos on TikTok, and I like to help people out. Um, it's a combination of the two, and to be honest with you, um, I lost my passion for it when I lost my last account due to people that couldn't stand looking at themselves in the mirror. 
And uh, I just the messages kept coming in of people telling me how much I've helped them. And then I got one message last week that uh, really, really made me want to get back into it. And I'm very grateful for this person. If you're watching, you know who you are. I don't want to put your business out in the streets too much because I already shared the conversation on social media. Um, but yeah, long story short, I'm back and I'm just going to be making stupid videos that pop myself. And then sometimes I'm going to be saying some things that I think uh, people need to hear in terms of mental health awareness. All right. So there you have it. Go down in the description. Uh, follow grizzly villain lives on tiktok you can just click the link in the description and hit follow there from there tony happy birthday buddy uh, happy birthday to snow to you. thank you and uh see you next week thank you for doing this with me reach the sky boy tell your friends you love them The preceding announcement has been paid for by Bomb Media Production.